Okay, let's do a wee tool repair-a-thon. First up, Bosch grinder. Did this is the 7115 Bosch grinder. More than likely, because they brushes. New set of brushes needed. Don't have the biggest brushes in these things, but they're nice fat brush. They get lots of power transferred. Only get about halfway through before the pin block pops out. It's great for grinder. That's the only thing you ever really need to change on them. You have them. Pop on a new set of brushes. Cost what? 10 euro. Well worth it. Even getting these changed here in the shop probably only cost about 15 euro. It's the most reliable. These are the most reliable four and a half inch grinder. Not the most powerful, but for price and performance, you can't beat it. A lot of engineering companies buy this exact model. And they don't exactly buy one or two, they buy loads of them. Did an order on there only a few weeks ago for a hundred of these here. The same company would just buy in 50 or 100 sets of brushes at a time. And then maybe bearings as well. And that's it. These things run very well. Because the brushes pop so soon, gives you a chance to check out the machine, make sure it's still working correctly. one done. Next up we have another Bosch grinder. This one is the 9115S. So one up from the 7115 but not as good a grinder to be quite honest. 7115 is a far better grinder than this one. This just has speed control. If you need speed control on a grinder, this is a good option. But if it's just a four and a half grinder you need for cutting steel grinding. Not as good to be quite honest. Motors just not as good. Smaller brushes generally just don't last as long as the sevens. And if you're using it as a grinder for grinding down, the actual gears in the head don't last too long. They tend to wear out. But they're cheap enough to fix if they do. If they do go on you. That's just a lead. And you can tell it's the lead when you give it a wee wiggle and she shuts down. So the brushes are fairly fresh in that one. The brushes are good enough. New lead will sort this out. And I hate the way Bosch have started this as well. You see this in a high cookie tools, they put a bit of glue on the screw for the switch, which you have to dig out. Now, when I do a lead in these grinders, or any grinder, 
I always put on a heavier cable. This is HO7 cable, one mil. It's a little bit thicker. It doesn't go on to the old grommet. So you also need a new grommet as well. A few euro extra, but it's well worth it. Leaves the grinder nice and comfortable to use with a good quality lead. The ferrules aren't essential, but make life so much easier when you're installing leads. If you ever want to know how short to cut your wires, a little wiring diagram for your plug actually shows you the length of the wires. Very useful if you're not sure how long to cut them because honestly the amount of times I see plugs coming on with bare live neutral cables hanging out the back of the plug it's not even funny it doesn't take much to actually put them on correctly have the actual cable clamp holding the sheath and not the cables That's what you should be left with. Obviously, there's a double insulated machine, so there's no earth. As you plug on, Clamp, grabbing the sheath, everything to the right size. Right, that's another one done. That's number two. Another one fixed. Okay, next up we have Dewalt nail gun. This must be from the States. 20 volt it says instead of 18. Same thing, 18 and 20 volts, exact same. Exact same battery, exact same power. The States use the 20 volts as the maximum charge that can go into the battery. 
Here in Europe we call it 18 volts because that's the actual nominal running voltage of the battery. Once you start using this, those 20 volts drops down to 18. So they're just going by the maximum voltage. We go with the nominal. Exact same batteries. Let's just mark it in there. That's why they call it 20 volt. Makes it sound better. Ewalt nail guns. Your heart can be broken with them sometimes. One of the cheapest options to buy if you have D volt batteries. They're a good gun, they do the job that they're meant to do, but they do require a lot of work to be quite honest with you. So parts wear out, they're not great in the rain, as you can see. Start to rust up. But other than that, if you're willing to put the money into them, they'll keep working for you, but you have to keep throwing money at them to keep them running. Now, 30 degree nail. Brushless motor, 30 degree, clipped and full round head nail. That's not true for a start. Clipped head nails with these things tick. They might be able to shoot a round nail, but they're not designed to shoot a round nail. If you start using the round head nails for the pass loads, you're going to get nail jams. You'll be firing two nails sometimes, they'll be breaking. Head's going to get pulled back into the motor. So don't use the full heads in these guns, they're not designed for it. See what's wrong with it. Quack, quack, quack. So it's just a normal click, click, click. You'll hear it all the time if you're used to Dewalt guns. That's either the pun or the axis worn out. Generally, that's what it is annoy. Motor starts, gun does everything it's meant to do, pull the trigger, you just hear a clicking sound instead of a firing. That's generally going to be axis or pin. Or springs, mind you. Spring's broken, just not getting the proper tension to take the driver back. Same as that one. So they break, they lock up, they stick to the bar. So there's only a wee bit of spring taking the driver all the way back. If it doesn't go back fully then, just start digging onto the motor and wearing it out. Keep an eye on your springs if they break lads, make sure you change them. Because that is about 90 or 100 euro to replace. Right, chance to set of springs first. It works, it works. And if it doesn't, then we'll replace the driver then. Try her again. That's hurt. 
one set of springs, clean up the driver a wee bit. That's all she needed. If your springs wear like that and start breaking, they start jamming on the pans, then the driver or your firing pan doesn't get brought doesn't get brought fully home again. So sometimes it won't load the nail if it's too far forward. Plus if it's too far forward it's not going to get dropped down onto the flywheel correctly and she'll not fire at all. You'll hear that constant click click click. If it's not the spring it's going to be your driver on top or the access on top of the dugout on top of the driver. Right that's another one done. That's number three. Next up, a Makita. We skill saw was the brushed version DSS 611. And enough we saw, but only brushed. So they don't really do as much work and they don't really take as much heavy work. But for longevity, if you're only doing light stuff, they're a handy wee tool. Cheap enough to buy now, anyway. nothing first things always the brushes but generally these things don't normally get through a set of brushes yeah hardly even broken on yet hardly even broken on yet still have the wee initial chamfer at the top been used but not used much yeah, that he's actually changed the brushes himself uh, they're fine the holders aren't melted it's working on side that off, unscrew this up dusty Yeah, well, the wet sometimes because these are brushed, these can draw a lot of current if they've been dogged and abused. So, them two wires are stuck together. So, that got hot and drew a lot of current. Actually, them two wires got hot and stuck together. And you can see that connector, how that's melted. So, that got hot too. Which sounds okay. It's just a simple switch. Yeah, that's okay. So after that, you're looking at the controller. Yeah, it's nice when it's easy to tell. You can see the burn mark around there. It's not the smoke out. She's coated on a black epoxy. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's gone. It's a heat sink on the back, so the actual controller's all hidden inside. You can't see any components. Sometimes you'll see a crack in the resin, or it's lifted up a wee bit. The top of a MOSFET will pop pop off and blow a bit of the epoxy out or this resin out, or she just pushes up along this edge. If something pops inside, starts to smoke and burn, 
that pulls the epoxy away and seal the smoke needs to get somewhere so it'll generally come out along the seal the seam here so you'll see this gooey tar coming out along the edge so that's a controller worth fixing sadly I don't have one I actually have two on order for two other machines and there's no sign of them coming in yet so this will have to go on the shelf wait for a controller to come in for it I'll order that now today hopefully it won't be too long now but sadly spare parts every brand has taken a long time to get spare parts from now Akita used to be good but they're going the same way as well Sometimes it's taken up to a month or two to get my Kita parts on. That particular controller has taken a long time. So one or two might come in shortly, but they're for another machine. I'll have to put this one on back order again. I'll order two again this time. One for this, one for stock. This controller would be a common piece to go. Simply because it's a brushed machine only light duty it's not going to do heavy work like a corded machine always get too used to the cordless gear start relying on them for everything start doing all jobs with them lithium battery when they're running if you put it under load if you dog the machine this can suck around 30 amps out of the battery 30 amps go through one of these wires will just melt it if you're dogging this thing, that power has to come through somewhere. It's going to go through these wires. The controller can only take so much. If you keep dogging them, they're going to pop something on that controller. Then it has to be replaced. If you want it, if you're doing this yourself, you can just cut this out completely, bypass it, and just wire the machine directly into the battery. So you leave the white and the red, they're being fed into the switch. Leave them alone, that red is going into the motor power for the controller is coming off this little red lead take that out this black lead cut that at the controller and joint it on to this other black lead going to the motor if you mess it up your motor will spin the wrong way you can just reverse the leads again if you do that but you have no battery protection then you run your battery down too much if you keep using the machine you can empty the power in your battery and then that'll destroy the battery then it won't charge so if you're wired on direct you're responsible for it. Leave that now, the parts come on. Next one, a kit of grinder. Same old, same old, overworked, melted the motor. Or melted the brush shoulder, sorry. That's the brush, the cap. Totally melted together. You can see the bits of plastic from the holder. Melted on. So them brushes are stuck in place now. That one's totally melted. Actually melted the plastic cap as well. People generally become too reliant on these. Start using them for more and more. Do away with the corded grinder and just keep using the cordless one. Oh, it's actually seized as well. No, it's not. The button's gone. Boys start getting too reliant on the cordless stuff. Do away with the corded versions. Start pulling out the corded one more and more and more. These are a convenience tool. Good for cutting a couple of bolts. A little bit of work. Nothing major. But because they are so convenient, you're obviously going to go for it more and more. As you can see with this one, dirt and dust on it. Someone's probably using this for tiling. It's getting used and abused for a long period of time. Generates a lot of heat because it's a brushed motor. Eventually that heat builds up, starts melting the brushes. If you need a cordless grinder and you're going to be doing a fair bit of work with it, always get a brushless one, no matter what brand. Brushed are good or light stuff. But if you overuse them, you're going to melt them like this here. See, this has been used by a tailor. Very stupid. 
stubborn one. I guess one's going to be worth fixing. Two thousand and sixteen. She's got a fair bit of work done. That's the end bell, the brush holder. That's just a lead connected onto here. Pull it out, pull it off, stick in a new one, and you can replace the brushes and the two caps. Generally, that gets these up and running again. But as you can see from that armature, it's too badly damaged. Nice little lacquers peeling off the windings as well. It's got that hot. Nah. Maybe you can get them going again as long as this isn't burnt. If you're replacing the armature as well. That's an extra 30 or 40 euro. Makes this too expensive. You'd be better off going out buying a new brushless version. And putting it under a three year warranty. This one's not going to be worth it. Leave it at that. Move on to the next one. Bosch hammer. Running, but hopefully only sparking on one side, which would be a good thing. Yeah. getting sparks on both sides it's generally going to be a bad motor sometimes it'll be the brushes but normally it'll be a bad armature this one's only sparking on one side hopefully it's just a worn out brush it's only sparking on one side it's generally a problem on that one side yeah not much left there. And that one is just about to pop. So that's gone down too far. It's this one that has the pin on it. It's a nice wee round bit here. That's actually a wee plastic pin on a spring belt into the brush. So once this is running, this graphite's getting worn away. That's all this is, basically an electrical wire. A consumable electrical wire is all it is. It's made of graphite, conducts electricity, pushes against the motor, onto the com bar, allows power to transfer in. Causes graphite, it's actually quite slippery. It allows the armature to run across it without friction. And because it's a light material, it eventually erodes away or wears away as the armature spinning so she's constantly being consumed so once they're completely consumed you have to replace them to allow the electricity to keep flowing if they go down too far and you start touching this wire and that will cause damage to the armature so you don't want to ever get it, these brushes worn out completely 
up in the stop before they go too far. That's what this little spring is. Once this bee's consumed, worn away so much, she gets this wee plastic piece. A little plastic insert then pops out, pushes the brush away from the rotor, and stops the machine. Normally, when that happens, a little red light will come on as well. We service light tell you to replace the brushes. So hopefully, a new set of brushes will cure this. So, one set of brushes. These are A50s. It should sort this out. Your wires in a wee bit. Now you don't want to run this machine without the bottom cover because that cover actually presses down on this bearing insert here, keeps the armature pushed up and the fan away from the air deflector. So make sure that's fitted. as we can do. Still sparking. That could be to do with the new brushes. They still have to bed on a little bit so you're going to get a little bit of sparking out of a new set of brushes. Outside of that it's going to be the armatures on its way out. Armature costs about 250 or 300 euro. You're not going to go sticking a new armature into a hammer for somebody who's just left it on for a set of brushes. So it may be sparking. It may be a bad armature maybe about to fail may as well give it back to the customer just tell them it's sparking let them run the machine till it actually packs up because when it does go you'll still be replacing the armature anyway leave it running let it keep on running till it does this could run for a week this could run for two years all depends on how much work the boy's doing with it how long it's run for how often it's been pulled out that's all we can do for now change the brushes get her running armature fails then look at changing it then